Okay, dear friends, I'm back with another machine on the hex box, which is a bounty hunter. And in this episode, I'd like to explain what the XSE vulnerability is, and to be more important, how to exploit such vulnerability. So you may be wondering what is XSE vulnerability or XML external entity injection vulnerability. As you know, nowadays many applications adopt the XML format to transmit data between the client, including the browser and the server. When the XML data arrives at the server, and the application or backend. Will will process such XML data based on the specific library or API. So why such XSE vulnerability is dangerous? Because it will allow us to declare the external entity, and the value of such external entity will be loaded. From outside of the DTD or the document type definition. In other words, this will allow the attacker to load or retrieve the the file on the on the target based on the file path or URL. For example, like a password file. In the Linux, of course, this will be very, very dangerous from the security perspective. So I think enough said. I'd like now, from this point, to showcase in the showcase this vulnerability in more detail, as I mentioned in the other video. Or very often, the best way to learn is hands-on practice. All right. So just I said, my video will be will be beyond the work slew. I will give you the as much as possible. I mean the explanation. Okay. So now we can switch. Yeah, this is the IP address of the target. Then we can switch over to the viewer. As you can see, I've already done the map scanning. And with the usual options like sin scan, virtual scan, default script scan, and also the comprehensive scan. So from the map scanning results, as you can see over here, the two open ports. The first one is twenty two, which is running SSH service, and also the corresponding version information. As we know, this version doesn't have any vulnerability. The second one is eighty, which is running HTTP service and also its version information. So what we are going to do next is to do the emulation manually through browser. Let's open up our browser of Firefox. Okay, let's make it make it bigger, so you can see what's going on. And the IP address. Let's hit enter. Yeah, we got the response back, and I think this page is static page, except this one. We can click on this one, and、uh, it says portal under development. Go here to test bounty tracker, and we click this super link. And this one will allow us to submit like exploit title, CWE CVSS score extra extra. So I think now we need to open the inspect two, embedded in the browser to analyze the request. But before we do that, we need to make direct immersion with the two like digital, and go buster.
you know, Nikto can give us information about web application, and also like misconfigurations or some vulnerabilities or some common files or directories which we can utilize. But no web server. So, oh, sorry, I mistyped the IP address of the target. Now let's hit en enter. As you can see, can give us the server information, and also the the header information. But uh, in this case, the Ligato will not give us any more useful information. I mean, from the security perspective. Next, I'd like to use GoBuster, and we can specify the URL of a target. And also the word list. As you you the dear buster word list would be one of my favorite word list medium, yeah, and the extension option like PHP, HTML, and TXT back and uh, GS let's hit enter to see which kind of directories we can get yeah this one has been emitted but uh, of course you can manually check this directory and nothing special here and also resources but this one database PHP of course frequently, such a file will review some credential or collection information to the database. So we can manually check on this file, PHP. But uh, we got empty response. And now we can go back to our terminal. Yeah, I think uh, we, yeah, it's enough for the direct emulation. I'd like to quit this process, and now we can go back to our browser and use the inspector. Maybe we can use not inspector. Maybe we can use the. Maybe yeah, okay, which is fine. We can use the inspector, this one or network. We can submit some information like a test. Test one one, and submit, and we can analyze this post request. Yeah, the request, and from the pattern of the data, this is encoded in the base sixty four. We can copy uh, this data, and we can use. Maybe we can select select all. And then we can use the cyber chef to decode cyber chef. Okay. And we can select the operation. Should be base sixty four. So I think we yeah this from the output we can know, yeah the data is XML format. So maybe just I mentioned at the very beginning, the XML format is used to transmit data between the client. In this case, it's browser and the server. So maybe the this application has XSE vulnerability, and then we can turn to Bob Suite to help us to to verify uh, this point. Okay, but we can anyway. We can make a copy this request or XML data onto our notebook, 
now we can go back to our browser and uh, set the proxy to burp and then of course we need to launch our burp suite maybe now we can close down the developer two of the browser accept next start and the proxy yeah intercept so then we can trigger a new request submit and go back to our bubble suite so then i think we can replace this data in xml format by our own payload to test if this application has xse vulnerability and the payload yeah we can get the payload from this website here and also i will put the the link into the description section below so maybe we can copy this one as our payload and make make some modifications make a copy and now of course we need to use this one to be our agent or bridge now we can make a copy next can we can paste into our notebook so then we need to transform or modify this payload to meet our situation yeah, i think we can make a copy of this part and we can make it bigger and we can here maybe undo this one and this is the dtd or document type definition and uh, this is the external xml external entity so this will load the value from outside of the maybe we do not we we, we we cannot use this one because this payload will be used for the windows sorry about that we can go back to this one and we can copy this payload and now we can paste in here okay okay then this one so this is the dtd the document type definition and uh, the xse of course you can use any name is external entity and the value will be loaded from the outer side of this dtt okay so this is why we call it external right so next of course we need to display or render the content and we need to copy this part and to be here and uh, here we can replace of course we need to refer yeah this is the valuable and we need to use this valuable here but the we need to use in the front of this valuable we need to use the end symbol xe and the comma of course this we do not need so i think this is payload we want to replace the original one but before we can use that just uh, we analyzed earlier we need to encode into the base 64 so i think we can make a copy of this payload and then we go back to our browser maybe this time we can turn off the proxy yeah and uh, we can paste in here and then we need to encode 
and also we need to do the URL encode for this output URL encode and please make sure you enable this one encode all special charts otherwise the payload will not work at all so think I think we can make a copy right and now we can go back to our and this we can send to repeater and then we can now and we can go to the repeater module and we can replace the original one by our own payload and this payload is encoded and then we can send as you can see we successfully retrieve the content of a password file and from this password file we can know that yeah there is one normal user which has the login or the shell because we are not we are not interested in such user because they will not uh, they cannot log in to the target so the user limit should be this one we can make a copy and then we can go back to the notebook and paste it in here and at this point we need to get or retrieve the password for this user of course we can use the hydra to crack but uh, in this case because the password is very complicated this way will not work at all we need to find other way to to get that information as we have we has we have already know that the target has db php and usually such a file contains some credentials so we need to retrieve the source code of this file okay and uh, we can go back to our and if you 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 will think that we can use this way similar way like uh, we can make a copy and you you if you want to change this to like a var html and the db php you will not retrieve the content because this one is not uh, like a password a text file this will be interpreted by the php right in php uh, executable so we need to use the php filter to retrieve the source code okay of this this file and uh, i've already yeah made research on that we can make a copy of this one and go back to our view yeah this is a very important point i'd like to point out for you and we can paste in here so we need to make a copy of this part and then we replace not a file we need replace by php filter you know php filter is some sort of the wrapper which can sanitize all the data the output of the php or, or other files we can make a copy and paste in here and uh, of course now we have already retrieved the content of password and now we want to get or retrieve the content of the db php right i think i have already explained it clearly so then we can make a copy of this payload this is the new payload we can make a copy and now we can go back to our Sabachev, you know, Sabachev is so amazing website when we deal with the encode and the decode. And uh, we can, maybe we need to refresh to make sure everything is all right. Yeah, which is okay. So I think now we got the new payload. We can make a copy and go back to the repeater module and this time we can replace this one to a new payload and send it as you can see yeah we 
got the response. Of course, this response or data is encoded, and we can make a copy. And now we can use the command line to decode, or you also you can use the subchef to decode. As you can see, we got the source code of the DB dot PHP file, and here we got the password for the database collection. We make a copy or make a note of this information down here. So uh, maybe this password is reused, you know, not only by used by the database collection, also is used by this user. So we can try that. We can make a copy and we can, yeah, we can clear and SSH development and uh, yes, accept. And we can paste the password here. Okay, we successfully log in to the target via SSH and our current user is development. And then we can get the user flag here. And also we can get the contract. This one, yeah, I'll be out of the office this week, blah, 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 blah. I'll set up the permissions for you to test this. So anyway, now what we are going to do next is to elevate our privilege. And uh, we need to do some local immersion. The first thing I think is sudo, sudo option. L to see whether the this user, I mean the current user, can run sudo. So then we, if we, if we can find that, and then we can get elevated. Okay, as you can see, we do not need to supply the password of a root user to run this script. So I think before we exploit this Python script, we need to review uh, this this code. First, right? We can cut this one and make copy paste in here. Okay. So I think now, yeah, this is just uh, the Python script to validate the ticket. The first function is to load the file, and the file should use the MD as extension, otherwise will exit. And the second function is the major function, evaluate ticket file. And uh, we'll do some checks. The first thing is the first line should start with this one. And uh, in second line, start with this one, otherwise will return false. And the next line is start with this one. And uh, also this one, yeah. So next nine should start with this, and then we'll replace the star and split and the got the first element in this list, right? And uh, will be converted to the integer. And the integer, this integer, divide by seven. And the remainder should be four. And then the validation number, and then use the EVL. And we'll do the, the plus, yeah? Because this one is the splitter. So maybe we need to, first we need to create the valid, the valid ticket. And uh, how to do it? Of course, we can, go to the temp directory, because in this temp directory, we have a full permissions to do anything. Now we just follow this Python script to create our valid ticket. For example, the first line should start with this one. So we just make a copy and then we can paste in here. Sorry, this video will be going on for a bit of a long time. But as I said at the very beginning, 
I try to explain every important topic and concept for you. And the second line should start with should start with this one. We can make a copy, and then paste in here. And next, the next line should be this one. Made a copy, and then the next line should. Should start with this one. The double stars. And uh, sorry, and uh, the the first, the first, the first element should be integer. And uh, this integer divided by divide by seven. The remainder will be four. So maybe so this one should be the first one is thirty two right, and we need to use the plus, and uh, and because this one, it will will、uh, calculate or make some of of all numbers, and for example we can second one. Yeah, it makes sure the total, the sum of these these three numbers or two number anyway, should be larger, larger than one hundred. Otherwise, this ticket will not will not be valid because we want to exploit this one. This function evil evil can run or execute command, right? So we must、uh, make sure the valid the ticket should be valid valid before this line, right? And、uh, now, of course, we can use the double stars. I think、uh, we can make a copy, or maybe we can save save to our current working directory. We can name to the extension should be MD. Do you remember that? Otherwise, this ticket is not valid. Okay, but we need to upload this file onto the target, and this will be very straightforward. We can set up the web server by Python. Now we can double get this file, and then we can sudo. Then we can run this Python script and、uh, enter the path to the ticket file temp and、uh, test MD file. Oh, MD. <laughs> Sorry, and、uh, yeah, this is the valid ticket. And next, we need to manipulate or inject the command, and this command will be executed by the evil function. This one, yeah, this one. So how to do it? This will be very easy. We just,、uh, of course, we need to manipulate this line. And、um, we can use or dynamically import the module. And、uh, system being bash. I think this is correct. Now we need to upload it. This again. We can open up another one, but、uh, maybe we need to remove the existing one. Test. Now we can. We can w get, or we can use the up. Error. Yes. And then we can run. 
this Python script again, temp and uh, test md. Yeah, as you can see from the banner, we have already become the root user. So wonderful, okay? And now we can navigate to root directory and we can retrieve the root flag. Okay, so, oh, sorry, cat, root. I'm a bit excited. Sorry about that. So that's pretty much it. I hope you can enjoy the value or benefit from my this episode to know or to know better what the XSE vulnerability is and how to exploit such a vulnerability and also how to analyze or review Python script. So, okay, so that's pretty much it. I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.